29 says, a metal round-headed nail can be thought of as a cone sitting on top of a cylinder which sits on top of a hemisphere. Now, these, th these things here are sort of telling you a formula here that you can make. So, the volume of a cone, we're told on the uh, second page, which is V equals a third pi r squared h. The volume of a cylinder you need to learn, which is the area of the cross-section times by the height. Okay, now that is sort of given in the formula booklet, but it says the volume of a prism, and this is a prism because if you cut it, um, you'd always see a circle, so that would be the area of a circle times by how long it is. And then a hemisphere is not given, but the volume of a sphere is given. So 4 thirds pi r cubed is the volume of a hemisphere, but that uh, is a volume of a sphere. But a hemisphere would be half of that, so we're looking for 2 thirds pi r cubed. But just be careful of this hemisphere, because I was just prepping for this question, I made a mistake doing it. In terms of the radius of this, it's also the height here. So the radius is equal to 12 lots of what the radius of the cone is, and 12 lots of the radius of what the cylinder is. So, let's make a formula that we can start subbing into. The volume of one nail, volume of nail, would equal, uh, would equal the cone, plus the cylinder, and then plus the hemisphere. And then I'm going to write the formulas out. So a third pi r squared h plus pi r squared h, and then plus two thirds pi r squared cubed. Be careful, so as I've already said, the radius of the, the cylinder there, the radius of the hemisphere is much bigger, so we'll need to change that for 12 lots of whatever we're told here. Now we're told the radius is equal to 0.4 millimeters. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to change r for open brackets and h for open brackets. That's the way I've taught my class to, to sub into things. Okay, now the radius is 0.4, so 0.4 is going in there, and the height of the cone is 9 lots of the radius. So I need to do 9 times by 0.4, and that comes to 3.6. Here, the radius of the cylinder is also 0.4, and its height is 15 lots of the radius, so it's to be 15 times by 0.4, which is 6. So 6 goes in there. And then finally in here, the radius of, of this hemisphere is 12 lots of what the radius of this cylinder and the, the cone is. So it's going to be 12 times by 0.4, which is 4.8. All of that now is going into our calculator. And that comes to 235.24245 point, point Now there's a very particular reason why I've written it like that. And the reason is because I haven't finished the question. We're told that a metal cuboid of volume 18,000 millimeters cubed is melted down and we know that one nail, volume of one nail, takes up that much uh, of the volume. So what we need to do now on the next page is work out the number of, uh, of nails going into it. So if we've got 18,000 millimetres cubed of a volume that we're going to use, and we know that one nail takes up 235.24 blah 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 millimetres cubed, that will test the number of nails. So what I want to put into my calculator is 18,000, and not divided by that number that I've written down there, but use ands as a, as a way of having a bit of consistency um, and using a really, really accurate um, way of, of making sure you have no rounding areas which comes to 76.516 blah 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 nails. So that's telling me it's 76 and a bit nails. So that means that I can make 76 nails. We wouldn't round that up because it's 76 and a bit. Even if that's 0.999, I can't make that, that 77th nail. Okay? Now the next uh, bit is saying circle either true or false for each of the statements below. It says a nail double the height of size A will have a total height of 28.4 millimeters. Now the height of this nail was 9R, so 9 lots of 0.4, plus 15 lots of 0.4, and then plus 12 lots of 0.4, which comes to 14.4. So a size double that, yeah, that would be double it. If I times that by two, look, I get 28.8, so that's true. Next one says, a nail double the height of size A will be eight times the, the weight of, of, of nail A. Now, in terms of its weight, 
Ah, okay. Now, this is asking for quite a tricky question here. Now, this is asking for similarity in volume because weight would be in three dimensions. So it would be the small times by the scale factor cubed is equal to the big. Now, the scale factor, we're making it twice as big, so two cubed. So it would be the weight of the small would equal the weight of the big one there. So it is actually going to be the weight times by eight. Now, that, that's hard. That's not an easy one to spot there. But that's all talking about uh, similarity in volume. Okay, a nail of three times the height of size A will have a total surface area six times that. Now that's related to the same thing again, but for area it'd be small times by scale factor squared for area equals the big. Now that's going to be two squared and two squared is four, that says six, so it's false. And then finally it says when R equals 0 0.8, the number of nails that could be produced from the same metal cuboids will be double the size of that. Well again, that's not true because of, of this fact here. You're going to make it actually an eighth of that, okay? So, that's false as well. The next question said, Hugh wants to open a savings account. Here are the details of the savings accounts advertised by two local Welsh banks. Park, uh, bank Pardan and Bank Tylo. Now, on the face of it, this one is a better deal than this one because its uh, interest is bigger. However, that's annual equivalence rate, so that's been paid in a year. This is paid per annum, but you are paid every month, so you'll get interest on your interest. So it may turn out that this is the better deal. The first question says, what is 1.98 as a decimal? Now, 1.98% dec uh, means 1.98 divided by 100, and that comes to 0 0.0198, and hopefully that's an option. It is there. Okay? It then says, which of these two banks should you choose in order to gain the most interest? So, you need to turn to the second page. The AER formula is given to you there, um, and it will tell you that it is 1 plus... And it will say I for interest, but it must be written as a decimal. So that would be 0 0.0198 divided by N, where N is the number of periods of interest goes into a year. So monthly into a year. How many months are in a year? 12. That divided by number there will be the same power number there, and then it will say take away 1. That answer comes to 0 0.0199 blah, blah, blah. Now that answer is as a decimal like we have here. We'll need to turn that back into a percentage. So times on that by 100 and round it to 2dp because this is to two decimal places gives us uh, gives us 2. Now you're going to round it, it ends up being 2.00% to two decimal places. So therefore, bank Pardan, or Padran, whatever it is, is best. Okay. Next question. It says, interest earned from savings is taxable according to the table below. Basic tax rate, basic rate taxpayer pays 20% annual interest on uh, interest earned above £1,000, and higher rate pays 40% on annual interest earned above £500. Matthew is a high rate taxpayer, therefore any savings interest he earns over £500 is taxed at 40%. On the 1st of May, he invested £150,000 to the saving account with, a, with an interest rate of 1.9% per annum. What is this interest rate per month? So per annum means per year, and then we want to change that into per month. So what we need to do is do 1.98 divided by 12. That gives us what is monthly interest rate is, but that still is a percentage, so I need to divide that by 100, which gives me, oh, okay, standard form, so... Uh, minus 3 there, that means that we're looking to have three zeros in front of it. So three zeros but not 165, three zeros but not 165, there it is, there, that one. Okay. It then says savings, uh, savings interest is added at the end of every month. Calculate the date when the interest that Matthew earned, um, earned went above his annual tax-free limit and the amount of tax he would pay on the interest that he had. Now this, this was a tricky question. Okay. The way that I did it was I said 1st of June, 1st of June would be 150,000, so it's an awful lot of money, not many people have this much in savings, and you would times it by that decimal to work out exactly how much interest he accumulated in the first month. So 150,000 times by 0 0.0165, and he got paid 247 pounds and 50 pence. Now, on the 1st of July, he would have then had that interest added onto it, so he has not 150,000, but 157 uh, pounds 50, and we times that again by that interest rate. So again, using the replay button on my calculator to make things slightly easier, 247.50, you can just put it as 0.5 if you want. And that comes to uh, 247 pounds and 91p. 
So then, I'm going to work out how much interest he's received in total. Now, it's got to be under 500 because 250 is half of 500. They're both under. So 24750 add 247, 24791 comes to 495 pounds and 41 pence. So at the moment, he's still safe. He's not paying any, any interest. So he's going to do one more month, and I'm assuming that he'll be getting more, more interest. On the 1st of August, he's going to have his total money in the account, which is that now added on to 150,000. So 150,000, 495 pounds and 41 pence. And we're going to times that by 0 0.0165. So I'm just writing that into my calculator, 495 pounds 41, comes to 248 and 32 pence. So now the total tax he's paid, or the total total interest, is that two is that 495 41. 495 pounds and 41. Add this bit here. Add the 24832, which into a calculator goes, and he's earned £743.73. pence. Okay, now, in order to go and work out how much um, tax he's paid, we're told, it says calculate the date and when the interest that Matthew, um, that Matthew earned above his annual tax free limit and the amount of tax he'd have to pay. Well, it says he only pays 40%, 40% on annual interest above 500 quid. So we're going to do two four, that's it, two uh, seven four three, seventy three. We're going to take away the five hundred quid that he pays no tax on. That leaves him with two hundred forty three pounds and seventy three pence that he pays tax on. So we're now going to do forty percent of two four three seventy three. And there's loads of different ways to do that. I'm going to do it as forty over hundred because that means forty percent. Of changes to times two four three seventy three, and that comes to ninety seven pounds and forty nine p. So that's how much he has to pay, and he pays that on the first of August.